Namaste, beloveds. This is Mother with Wisdom. Um, I was, um, excuse me, getting comfortable here. Um, I had started um, this video before and it cut out on me because I didn't have enough space in my um, computer. So um, a couple of cards were already pulled and I'm just going to redo everything. Um, but I'm going to use the cards that came forward. And I'm just going to start um, once again with the card that came um, from the Medicine Woman deck. And this card just flew out, beloveds. It just flew to the floor, okay? And I had to retrieve it. And it's the Seven of Bowls. Dolphin, Spirit Lady, Guide, and these two. And I love the amethyst leaves and the little yellow flowers. It's just perfect to me. And there's just so much amethyst in this. <laughs> and amethyst is my one of my go-to crystals. Seven of Bowls, Seven of Bowls, and the Seven of Bowls is on page 208, which is a 10, which is completion. There we go. And New Beginnings, because it's of the number one present. Seven of Bowls, swept away. Time has brought me ever deeper into relationship with my true love partner. More and more, Great Spirit, we realize that this is you. In each of us, you live and manifest your beauty. And, beloveds, I said on this that when you are able to recognize intent with intent the divine inside of another being, you are seeing the greatest part of them. You are seeing that which can be adored, that which you can devote yourself to, that which is tangible to you, that which is what makes God real to you. You you see this, you see that energy in this person, you respect that energy in this person, you treat that person a certain way because of the spirit that resides within them and the spirit that you recognize within them. And it's very important to look at someone in that way. And sometimes it's very, very hard. It's very, very hard. Just like with Trump, it's very, very hard. But the divine is there. Just because he doesn't act upon it does not mean that it is not there. It just means that we don't see it. Or we won't allow ourselves to see it. And we all have our own reasons for that. But love is love. It, it is an essence. It is an expression of an essence. Love is God. It is divine. Okay. <laughs> wow. Hmm. Okay. I'm not going there with that. Sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. In each of us you live and manifest your beauty. Let me start over, beloveds. This is the prayer of seven of bowls swept away. This is... I won't go there. <laughs> okay. Focus, Valerie. Focus, ground. Focus. Okay. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Whoa, they just, mm. okay. Prayer, 
Time has brought me ever deeper into relationship with my true love partner, more and more great spirit. We realize that this is you. In each of us you live and manifest your beauty. Our blessings are great, but we know there is much ahead of us as we strive even more to know your presence in us. In offering our wholeness to each other, we begin to realize your holiness and become one with it. In all of our dreams, we see that we desire only complete union with you. Every pleasure we perceive is an invitation to come into your greatness of being. Let us not become lost in the manifest form of you, but be ever inspired by it to continue on your path. And the lesson of this card, the force overpowers you. You are swept away in an ocean of sensation. Visions totally inspire you. This is a peak experience. You may have to increase your tolerance for bliss. Once again, allow. Let yourself feel the happiness without fear. The wave may subside, but it will rise again. The illusion is that all future problems are solved by the wave of love you feel. <laughs> no. This wave has come because you were complete with your past. You fully let go and went ahead. You tied up loose ends and let yourself take some action in your own behalf. When you are current, the current is strong. So ride this wave. Enjoy it. Live full of grace. But appreciate and be here now. Keep your eye on the present and continue to give yourself permission to be fully yourself. You do not earn this experience by self-denial. You may deserve it. In your opinion, to balance a previous period of self-denial. But that is not how you got it. I hope you're hearing this, beloved. Because a lot of times we, especially we as women and women of color, we will sacrifice, we will do without, we will make do, you know, and then we'll we'll tell us, well, I've earned this because of all the things that I've, you know, did without. And this card is saying, no, you got what you got, you received what you received because you're being you. You're finally allowing yourself to be you. You are stepping out. You're getting in that current. You're transforming and transmuting. And I'm seeing all this amethyst. You're clearing away negative energies. You're, you're making it do what it do. And you're being rewarded for that. Understand the process. Self-denial and self-sacrifice is not going to equal a reward for you. You don't do it for reward. When you give, you give. When you love, you love. But when you are centered, when you are grounded, and when you are flowing in the current of being who you are at your highest vibration that you're allowing yourself to vibrate at, that's when you get rewarded. That's when you manifest what you truly wanted. That's when you connect with the universe. Seven of bowls, beloved, seven of bowls. You got it by being you. You had nothing to lose at the time, so you let yourself be. Now continue to live that fully. Be whole. Do not start putting aside parts of yourself for fear they might threaten this wonderful feeling. Wow, that was 
that just knocked me on my ass, okay? <laughs> And I read it in the other one, too, and it's knocking me on my ass again. Yes, it is. 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 Okay. The fi I'm going to read that again because I'm not the only one with parts. Okay? And we allow our parts sometimes to dictate our, our lives, our current situations, our decisions. And we need to understand that this is not the whole us. This is the part of us. And that this part is extremely biased. Okay? It is extremely opinionated. It is part and parcel of your ego and your spirit. It is that kind of a baby. It is a dualistic baby. But that voice is yours. It is you. But you cannot let it control because it is a part. It is not the whole. It is the whole self, the divine and the human self, the mind self, the emotional self, the spiritual self, the sexual self, the innocent self, all of your selves, okay? Half... <laughs> have to be whole. The feeling is always waiting in the ethers to encompass you. When you are courageous enough to be absolutely who you are in the moment, this is an exciting time. Go with it. And I'm going to say this, and this did not come up in the other video. It just came up right now. And let me focus in on it. <laughs> Understand that just like we have banks here and savings accounts and checking accounts and all that good stuff, in the spirit world, in the ethers, you have banking accounts. We can call them banking accounts. And you have spirit energy and spirit essence there. Every time you are aligned, you create, add interest, add light, add essence, add your, your, your spiritual bank account increases, okay? And what this is telling you is that we do not have to limit ourselves. We do not have to self-deny just because we don't have it on the earthly plane. There is a much higher plane where our treasures are really stored. And these are the treasures that we want to access because they bring that divine um, fulfillment, so to speak. And that is what this card is saying. Swept away. Enjoy it. Let, let the wave catch you and take you. You know, let it take, let it direct where the direction in which you are to go. And water will do that. Water will pull you under and push you and, and shove you and do all of that kind of stuff to you, especially the ocean, you know. And my big old tail, I went and got in, and my daughter lives in um, California, so I went and got in the Pacific. And, oh, my God, you know, I hadn't been in the ocean like that since I was a child. And even with my big old self, that, that water was whoosh, whipping me around like I was a little leaf or something. And I was like, that's force play. Whoo! So let these waves of energy, waves of knowing, waves of love, waves of awakening, waves of downloads, let them come. Flow with them. See what they have to gift you with. Allow them to teach you. Be open to receive. Not afraid. 
and just hold out your arms and say, take me, I'm yours. Come on, wave, let's go. And just do your thing. And know that you are loved and that you are protected right now. Set your intentions and focus and vibrate at your highest, beloveds. Allow yourself to be. Allow yourself to become. Allow yourself to not only give, but to receive. Many of us, speaking specifically for myself, as a giver, we don't know how to receive. We're so used to giving. And we're so used to giving to takers that they never have enough. So you never have time to receive because you're always filling them up because they're always empty. They always need some more, 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 more. I need more of this. I need more of that. I can't be satisfied. I'm going to complain about that. And when you love, you try to, you know, compensate for them. You try to prop them up. You try to help them. You try to make them feel better, so to speak. Um, and sometimes you get lost in the process. And what this is saying is love yourself enough not to get lost in the process, in the journey. You know, enjoy each moment of it. And understand that in each moment you are being divine in that current. You're expressing. You're receiving. You're being divine love. You're releasing divine love. You're receiving divine love. You're being divine love. And there is no higher frequency. So that's the bar. Okay, the next card, 1717. Wow. <laughs> the next card um, that was pulled before the video did its little thing and had me start over. And I had pulled this card. And this is from the Archangel Raphael deck. Um, and I called it strength, but it's actually stretch, stretch. And what you, what you see is this angel, Raphael, stretching out his hand. And restoring, blessing, giving. He's reaching out. He's stretching out his arm. Dear Archangel Raphael, thank you for staying by my side and motivating me to take excellent care of myself in all ways. So to stretch is to extend yourself. So, beloveds, we have to extend ourselves to each other. We have to reach out. We have to, you know, we have to connect. We have to start thinking about connecting. We have to, this is what the Lion's Gate is all about. Wow, that's okay. Family and pride, family and pride. Let's see what this card has to say. Stretch. Stretch is on page 90, so that makes it a nine energy. And let's see what it says. Archangel Raphael is guiding you to stretch your body in gentle, feel-good postures, such as yoga or Pilates. These and other stretching methods are wonderful for stress management and relaxation, as well as for increasing your range of motion and limberness. Many people believe that yoga is a fountain of youth. You received this card because Raphael wants to motivate you to stretch your muscles regularly and healthfully. He'll guide you to the best forms of exercise and match you with an appropriate professional, such as a yoga instructor or physical therapist. 
possible specific meanings. Stretch yourself emotionally beyond your comfort zone. Woo. Good one. Take a relaxation break. Attend a yoga camp. Stretch yourself financially for a dreamed about purchase as the universe will support you in return. Your life purpose involves teaching yoga. My prayer, dear Archangel Raphael, thank you for staying by my side and motivating me to take excellent care of myself in all ways. I'm going to have to focus in on that prayer because... That's something you need. That's something you need. Health. Stretch. Wow. (laughs) Okay. I am looking at this card and I'm seeing all kind of geometric shapes, signs, and symbols in the tree. That's just me, though. Whenever I look at something, I I see more than that is there. Um, Let's move forward now with the... Other two cards were the animal messenger cards and zebra came out. Zebra, zebra. Okay, let's see what zebra has to say. And zebra is like the last card in this deck. Um, page 135, which is also a nine. Let Go of your fear and know that you are safe and protected at all times. Hmm. I want you to think about where the zebra lives and what the zebra does. And the zebra is always surrounded by predators. But I want really want you to listen to this card. Let go of your fear and know that you are safe and protected at all times. Whenever you venture into unfamiliar territory, it's quite natural to feel some trepidation. Your mind can create all sorts of scenarios as to what can go wrong. Excuse me. In the other video, beloveds, I shared that I have always been blessed with a very active imagination, one that is not limited at all, okay, not even to this planet or or dimension or galaxy or whatever you want to call it. And so I've always, you know, people, my children, for example, I, I shared this, um, when my children were old enough to go out and do things on their own, I would be so worried about them and, you know, check in. All you got to do is check in. All you just, I ain't trying to know what you're doing or where you're at, or blah, 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 but just let me know you're okay. That's all I need to know is that you're okay. Just, just, you know, be considerate. And they wouldn't, you know, most times, mo- but when, you know, after you get on them a couple of times, they, they be like, it's, it's, Easier just to call her and, and, and be done with it. <laughs> you know, it's like Al Greed. It's cheaper to keep her, baby. Cheaper to keep her. Keep her happy. She good. All she want to know is you all right. Check in. She good. That's it. And so, you know, my daughter, my son, they would be like, Ma, what did you think had happened? We live in this little bitty town and blah, 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 blah. What do you think could have could have happened? And I'm like, well, since you asked, aliens could have came and got you. Some anything could happen. This and this could happen. You could have been in a ditch somewhere. And they're like, oh Lord, mama, mama, it ain't that serious. I'm like, yes, it is. Yes, it is. If you don't call me, I don't know. You, you know, you got to let me know. You okay? And they're like, Ma, you just got to trust. We, You raised us. We got this, okay? We we got this. Trust that you did your job, you know? And if something go, you know, you're the first person we call it. The first one. So I'm like, yeah, that's true. Okay. All right. 
but that don't stop my imagination. You know, that that I have to stop it. I'm like, they called, they good. And and gone about my business. But it is it is something else, beloved. It is it is something else. What the mind can do, okay, and where the mind can take you, depending upon who you are and how you think. It's deep. Doubts. And uncertainties may arise and the path can seem fraught with challenges and sometimes even danger. You may find yourself stuck at times, fearful about moving ahead. Yet much of what we label as fear isn't actually fear. True fear is a vital instinctual response to any life-threatening situation. Zebras just don't walk around afraid and anxious about something going to pop out and get them. That fear doesn't come until those instincts kick in. And that, then that fear from what they've seen or what they smelled or, but they don't sit there and be anxious over the unknown. Humans do. Humans do. And that's because we think we have to control everything or we have to be prepared for everything. And what we're being told with these cards is that we need to trust the current. Allow the current to take us. Allow spirit to be spirit. Allow love to be love. These things are divine in their very design. So... They don't need us <laughs> trying to micromanage. Um, just more understanding and understanding and connecting with the truth of it, the essence of it. Okay. True fear is a vital instinctual response to any life-threatening situation and is triggered not only by circumstances or events, but even more so by what you think about those circumstances or events. Stay relaxed, yet vigilant, trusting that nothing, you, nothing can truly harm you and that your body will provide sensory information that is any actual if there is any actual danger, if there truly is any threat, then your instincts will tell you what to do. Whatever you feel, whenever you feel an exaggerated sense of fear triggered, mainly by your thoughts, one that has little or no basis in reality, take a few slow, deep breaths. Call upon spirit helpers who have provided their guidance and protection before. Reach out to close friends or family for reassurance and to help you feel grounded and centered. Recall those times in the past when you did feel frightened or were endangered and not only survived, but came through intact. You can also relabel fear and instead call it excitement. <laughs> As the two emotions are very similar in the way they manifest in the body. Most of all, trust your spirit guides, your instincts, and your friends to watch out for you. Associations of the Zebra Protection, guardianship, alertness, kind-heartedness, compassion, individuality, compromise, challenge, analysis, illusion, magic, sure-footedness, confident, changes, and agility. All with the card Zebra. Let go of your fear and know that you are safe and protected at all times. To be able to walk in that assurance, to be able to walk in that knowing, that is power. That is powerful. And we're being given the tools, beloved. That's a tool. So the next card was Kiwi. Do a walking meditation each day for the next week. So we have been told to by Raphael to do the stretching and everything. And now we're being told to walk, walk it out. Q. 
kiwi. 65, which is an 11, which is a door. So, <laughs> this is your doorway to hell. This is your doorway to meditation. Because this card is about um, meditation. Most of the time, walking is a good way that people get from point A to point B, often in a rush and without regard for what's going on around them. Meditation is typically viewed as something people do while sitting across legged for several minutes. However, that's only one form of meditation. Walking with awareness and intention is another. Find a place, preferably in nature, such as the forest or woods, where you can simply walk for 10 minutes or more each day for the next week. Experiment by walking more slowly than you usually do. Try moving at 80% of your usual speed. You can also try speeding up your pace, but stay present and be aware of how it feels to move so rapidly. And beloveds, when I read this card before, I had a, um, I'll call it a flash, <laughs> a, a flash of earth changes. And beloveds, we have to start doing, getting ourselves together. We need to increase our endurance and we need to increase our stamina. Our endurance and our stamina. However that resonates for you, whatever that looks like for you, this is the advice. This is the wisdom from spirit. Um, and these two cards are fully supporting it. What I saw was earth changes happening. Um, and I've been ha having these flashes, dreams, loop, visions, downloads, whatever you want to call them. Um, I've even remembered a couple of times in past lives when I've, I've, I've gone, been through the process. Um, so it's very important that you work on your endurance and your stamina. You need to be able to walk. You need to be able to move. If it's no more than a mile. So practice, get yourself together so you can at least walk a mile. And I have, not that I'm claiming disability or illness or sickness or anything, but I'm, I deal with reality, baby, okay? And the reality is arthritis, okay? And joint damage. At one point, I was 600 pounds, okay? So the cartilage in my knees is just about gone. And walking and doing a lot of, of a lot of that is, whew. and so I have to get myself in the head space, first of all, to confront the pain, deal with the pain, and just work it out. Just do what you do. Just, just, you know, endurance and stamina. What are you going for? Endurance and stamina. One, two, one, two. I'm going to have to get me a little Walkman or whatever the hell y'all use nowadays. iPhones or whatever. And just winter is coming. <laughs> That's my excuse. But winter, but winter. But I've been thinking and I can take my tail to the mall. And I can walk in there during the winter time. There are other other people walking. And I live in a small little town. So, you know, it's not a lot of people going to be. A it is what it is. I just got to get myself together and understand that this is the next phase. And this is what the next phase requires of me. Um, like I said, you have built up certain rewards and gifts. So it's time to 
cash in on a few of those, you know? And for me, that is about the exercising more, moving more, stretching more, moving my body more, demanding more of myself physically than I have been. I've been settling, <laughs> you know, settling for less movement. Okay, we're good, less. But I've got to get myself together now and, and be focused. And I have another grandbaby coming, so that's another incentive, you know, to get myself together so I can chase my grandbabies around. Um, let's get to it. <laughs> it is, if, then slow way down for a few steps to where you can really feel each step you take. Notice how the contact with the ground starts at your heel and slowly moves up to your toes. If possible, try it barefoot. Be aware of the sights, sounds, and smells as you walk, as well as the rhythmic feeling in your body. Whatever pace you set, be sure to breathe consciously and consistently with full awareness. Doing so while walking is what makes it a meditation. Moving meditation, wow. Associations, grounded, nocturnal, survival, flexibility, fatherhood, innocence, earthiness, ancient wisdom, inspiration, safety, speed, quickness, detection, all are associated with the Kiwi. Okay, Adana, I just thought of you. Kiwi is her totem. <laughs> all right, that is messages from the angels. Let us do the, um, that was message from the animals, I'm sorry, not the angels. Let us do the angel romance, um, Doreen Virtue, and just see what we get from there. We have heart-to-heart -heart conversations, honestly discuss your feelings with each other. This card is a trip, okay. Look at his face. Look at her face. She's the one talking, or so it seems. There are two angels. That one is looking, is turned one way and turned back looking at them. And then this one here, look at that, is like, oh my goodness, really? 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 This, I just love this card. Okay, let's see what Doreen Virtue has to say. Heart to heart conversations. Heart to heart conversations is on page 43, which is a seven. 43. Heart-to-heart <laughs> -heart conversations. Honestly discuss your feelings with each other. Your love life needs a healthy infusion of honest communication. According to the romance angels, you've been harboring emotions that are masking your feelings of love. There's still time to heal the situation, however. It will require effort on your part. You may need to initiate an uncomfortable discussion and risk upsetting your partner. In the end, though, this is a necessary move to ensure the health of your relationship. If necessary, schedule an appointment with a counselor to facilitate the discussion. This professional can steer the conversation away from blame and toward resolution. You can also gain support from free groups such as Emotions Anonymous, Codependence Anonymous, or Al-Anon. Meetings are held internationally and online, and you can find them through your internet search engine. Whether you communicate with your partner alone or with a neutral third party, 
Your heart-to-heart discussions will result in personal growth. Remember that you can't control another's reactions. You can only be honest about how you feel and know what you will and won't accept in a relationship. By sharing your feelings, you stand a much better chance of teaching your partner about your needs instead of suffering silently. So, beloveds, talk about what you need to talk about. Get it all out. Don't don't suffer. Why sit there and suffer when all you have to do is talk and communicate about your feelings? Your feelings are valid. They are yours. And if that is your partner, your opinions should matter. Your thoughts should matter. What's on your heart should matter. They should feel something is off balance. They should come to you. What's going on, baby? What's wrong? Talk to me. And if you are not prepared in that moment to to talk, baby, let me, I'm still processing this. I'll, I'll tell you when I'm ready. I'm just not ready to to go into it yet. I haven't even picked it apart for myself just yet. But uh, I'll get there. And you know, we'll we'll get there. We'll work it out. We'll work it out. And if that is the foundation of your relationship where you can go to each other and work things out, then you have Fertile, fertile, a fertile relationship. You know, you have a fertile relationship because an infertile relationship is one where there is no conversation. What can grow when there's there's no no connection, no communication, no anything, and one person is you go first. No, you go first. No, you go first. No, you go first. Uh, okay, nothing is going to, nothing is going to be born like that. Nothing is going to be conceived like that. Nothing is going to be seeded or like that. That is, that is a very selfish way to be in a relationship. That's how I feel. And when I come across something like that, I just say, okay, I'm going to show you how that feels. <laughs> I'm going to take myself over here. And if you want to talk to me, you know where I'm at. I don't have to be the one to talk all the time first. That's not how it goes. This is equal opportunity. 50-50. There is no boss. There is no leader. There's no king. There, there's none of that. We we are God and goddess. Equal partners. Talking should not be this. Huge obstacle. That you have to overcome in a relationship. Now, when you're just meeting someone, yeah, I can understand that. I can I can understand that because then you you don't have any boundaries. You don't you don't know that person. You know? You you're getting to know them. And you could both be shy. You could both, you know, just need to warm up. You need a warm up period. You know, sometimes that's that's all that's necessary is a warm up period is for the two of you to be able to sit down together, be together and stand that and increase it in increments, you know. And if there's distance involved, do it with texting or, or over the phone or Skype or whatever. But get used to looking in each other's eyes, get used to speaking to each other, get used to sharing and connecting. Because without that, <laughs> you ain't got diddly squat, baby. Not diddly squat. 
not diddly. <laughs> okay. And that is that card. And let me move on. Next, we're going to pull from the Abraham and Esther Hicks. Getting into the vortex. Getting out of the vortex. <laughs> what is it? I always getting into the vortex. Getting into the vortex. <clears throat> okay, getting into the vortex, Mama. Can you give us something on love relationships? Um, baby, don't hurt me. 3D, kind of. Why we balk at love? Why we have such a, a hard time? With love. And I like to generally get three from from these. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we have. We need one more, Mama. One more. Okay. I'm going to start with the first one that came. And that is... 17, which is an 8, and it says, by default, I could have attracted unwanted relationships, and I've seen this card before, we've had this card before, the white dove and the raven and the tree and the roots, and I love the downward triangle, <laughs> Many of the relationships or experiences you have attracted, you would not have deliberately attracted if you had been doing it on purpose. Wait a minute, beloveds. <laughs> okay, hold on. Many of the relationships or experiences you have attracted, you would not have deliberately attracted if you had been doing it on purpose. Ah, okay. But much of your attraction is not done by deliberate intent, but rather by default. Oh my God, that is so powerful. Okay. It is important to understand that you get what you think about, whether you want it or not. And chronic thoughts about unwanted things invite or ask for matching experiences. The law of attraction makes it so. So if you're sitting here in a relationship and you're wondering, is he cheating on me? Is he cheating on me? I feel like he cheating on me. I wonder if he cheating on me. He round so and so and so and you know how ho is she is. Is he cheating on me? He gonna cheat on me. I know he gonna cheat on me. He going to cheat on me. Guess what you're doing? you putting that energy out there. And guess what you're attracting? He going to cheat on you. Because of chronic thoughts about unwanted things, invite or ask for matching experiences. So the universe hears you saying, um, I need him to cheat on me so I can experience what that feels like. So I can, you know, go through that all over again. Cause obviously I didn't learn cause I I'm still over here obsessing about it and, and, and just having these chronic thoughts about this again. And this man may not have even cheated on you. That may have been your last relationship. This man is totally different, but because it happened, it's in your thoughts and it's all, if it's chronic, that means you, every single day, <laughs> every hour on the hour, he, he, he going to cheat on me. He going to cheat on me. He, he going to cheat on me. And baby, you're, you're making it happen. That, that man is feeling that energy as well. And you pushing him. Because every time you, are you cheating on me? Who is that? And he's like, damn woman, I'm loving you. I'm with you. What is your problem? 
but Jamal cheated on me. And, you know, and homie going to say, I'm not Jamal. <laughs> that was Jamal. My name is Tyrone. Okay. And Tyrone's mama didn't raise no cheater. Okay. I think more of myself than that. So you're either going to believe that and deal with it and accept it, or you're going to lose me because you're so worried about me cheating on you that you can't even enjoy my love that I've got to give you. Ah, the law of attraction makes it so. Makes it so. So if you want an honest love, Focus on it. Create it within yourself. Be able to envision what you want. How you want your relationship to look. What you want it to be based upon. What its foundation is. And it's going to be different with each couple. <laughs> because of the dynamics of diversity individuality and collectivity and that person's ability to um, see and connect with the divine within you. Okay, let's go for the next one. My manifestations are the indications of my belief. Wow. This is 23, which is a five. And I am just loving the interplay of light and shadow and this little aqua marine teal, these colors. Ah, okay. <laughs> I love the stars that are over here. Let me see. I love the stars that are over here. Here they go, up here. See the stars? <laughs> the stars. And then she has one here. And this is her shadow side with the wings. And this is her light side. And I, I just love it. My manifestations are the indications of my beliefs. So she manifested that star. It is always true that whatever you are living always matches your chronic vibrational patterns or beliefs. Boy, they like this chronic word, Miss Esther and Jerry. And it does not matter if you have an excellent excuse for your negative thoughts and negative emotions. They still equal your point of attraction. Wow. Okay, what just flashed was a compass, okay, and, and a little star, the little hand spinning all around and then it having north and it just going bing because you're focusing on north. North is celestial, north is winter, north is up, north is, <laughs> north is north, okay, and Wow. That's the point. If north is your point of attraction, then that compass is automatically going to go there no matter where you're going because you're focused on north. You could be going south, but you're focused on north and that compass is in your head. So it's not going to point to south where you're headed. It's going to point to north where your mind and your energy is focused. So that's very deep, beloved. So living, living always matches your chronic vibrational patterns or beliefs. So what, if you're having negative thoughts and making excuses, your life is going to be on track that way so that you can do those things because it's going to match the energy frequency that you're attracted to and attracting. So if it's on that negative, you're going to be dealing with negative. Stop thinking about negative things. That's what this card is saying. 
Stop thinking about negative things. What is manifesting on every subject in your life is an indicator of the beliefs you hold and your chronic patterns of thought. Again, we're dealing with love and baby don't hurt me. So if you enter your relationships with the chronic thoughts of, of this person hurting you or the relationship ending or it breaking up or this person not seeing you or this person not hearing you or this person not communicating with you or this person, this person, this person, this person. Guess what you're doing? You are making that happen. You are manifesting. You are telling the universe what you want and what you need. I, I, I need this because I still need to grow because I'm still focused on having these chronic thoughts. I have not learned the self-discipline, the self-mastery of redirecting my thoughts or of shutting a thought down completely. See, when you have parts, some parts are, they're, they're different and some parts you can just say, okay, be quiet, or I ain't going to pay you no attention, you know, or, or whatever, just ignore them. Other parts, oh my God. And honey, when you got some ghetto ass parts, sometimes you got to go in there and go in on them, go straight up because they, they, they forget. They think you, oh, you good, Valerie. You, you Holy Spirit, Valerie. You, you, Valerie, 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 Valerie. And you have to let them, <laughs> you have to go in and let them know. You know, you are a voice in my head. You are a part of me that carried something for me. You stepped up. You have helped me many times. But I don't have to listen to every little damn thing you say, okay? <laughs> you are a part. Know your place. Go sit your ass down. Shut the up. If you got to have these kind of conversations with yourself, have them. Have them. Because it's, it's better to have them, baby, than to go out there half cocked and have people looking at you like, you know what she did? <laughs> have your conversations with yourself and don't give a damn about what nobody think about them. Because this is you. This is your energy. This is your divine essence. Nobody controls that but you. Not even your parts. And they will try to convince you <laughs> that, oh, you need to listen to me because you don't know how to do that. And you let somebody walk all over you and you did this and you and they did this to us and they did that to us and do 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 do. And you just gotta be like, no. We're going to ride this wave. We're going to ride it. We're going to let it take us. Okay? And if it drag us under for a little bit, damn it, we'll learn to hold our damn breath. Okay? It's, it's just like that. And let it be like that. Let it be like that. Mean it. Be in your heart and in your head. Be centered and grounded in, in who you are. And know that it takes all of your parts to know who you are. So don't dismiss any of them because you need them. But you can let them know and you need to know. You don't run nothing. You don't run nothing but your mouth. And I hear you. But you know what? I'm tired of hearing you. 
I'm tired of listening to you. Shut up. And beloveds, that's when you go and do something else. You put something else in your mind. You put something else in your spirit. You are protecting yourself. You are guarding yourself. You are guiding yourself. You are allowing your guides and your guardians to help you along to stop the constant chronic low vibrating thoughts because that is what is also killing you. That is releasing the hormones for your diabetes. That is releasing the anger for your blood pressure to rise. That that is making you have cancer and all of that simply because you don't know how to get yourself in alignment inside. You don't know how to have that conversation with yourself. Learn how to talk to yourself. Learn. Okay, next card. <laughs> next card is number five. My relationships are supposed to feel good. <laughs> mama, mama. Wow. Sorry, I was lost in the card, just lost in the card, just lost in the card. So much to see. So much to see. Excuse my nails. I have not gone to Laurel yet. I'm going to have to do it. I'm still going to have to get my little self waxed. <laughs> Getting old and all these hairs. Okay, back to it. Your life is supposed to feel good. 10208. Okay, yeah, let me move on. Your life is supposed to feel good to you. Before your birth, you knew that the primary component of your physical experience that would offer the greatest value for your personal and collective expansion and joy would be the relationships that you would experience with each other. It was your plan to relish the diversity of your relationships and to choose from them the details that would make up your creations. And here you are. You designed your relationships. You call them to you. You attracted that experience, lesson. Do not judge it. Take it for what it is. Go with the current of it. If you need to get away, get away. Listen to your instincts. Let them guide you. Okay, let's move forward with the 2013 Oracle deck. And um, the cards, these are so tiny, so <laughs> they're so cute. They're so cute. Okay, let's see. And I'm just going to... <laughs> so many of them turned over. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, gosh. Okay. I, I got one. I got one. Let's see. Okay. Let's get to it. This is 133.7. Red Parrot Hearing. This is also number 11. Um, Red Parrot is associated with the number 11, which the Mayans represented with two horizontal bars, with a single dot above. Each horizontal bar, like the rung of a ladder, is a new level of reality. 
a new world. The dot is the seed sown in the ground of the new world. Can you get some lights on? Yeah. Thanks. The dot is the seed. Let me start over, beloved. I'm sorry. <laughs> Red parrot is associated with the number 11, which the Mayans represented with two horizontal bars with a single dot above. Each horizontal bar, like the rung of a ladder, is a new level of reality, a new world. The dot is the seed sown in the ground of the new world, containing the spark of all its potential. At noon, the spirit of Sunface, the fire, the red parrot would come sweeping down from the sky to rekindle the sacrificial flames. Red parrot, like the scarlet macaw, is considered precious and is also associated with hearing. Red parrots travel in pairs and are called sacred red twins, guardians of the red echo. Sound, a gift from the ether seeds our world. Red Parrot reminds us that there can be no sound without silence. There is a fracturing of the celestial harmonies and the manner and form in which we hear. Red Parrot with fire and hearing medicines teaches us to listen carefully so that we might hear original music the sound that carries the name of the Holy One. Red Parrot Woman prophesied to the people in olden times. She was a tiny native woman in a red hat and red coat. She was holy. Once two red parrots came to the village square and began to make a loud squawking. The people got fed up with the noise and threw stones at them, but still the birds didn't budge, squawking louder day and night. The wise elders went to the birds and asked what they wanted to tell them. The elders could not understand the squawks of the red parrots. People had lost their ability to communicate with other forms of life. And here are those red parrots, even bigger than that little card, and I just love it. Now that there, now there were at the. Now there were at this time holy twins named Lizard and Magpie. The twins lived in a grove of trees outside the village with their father. The twins talked with trees. They talked to stones. They even talked to the wind. The people deeply respected and acknowledged these powers of the twins. The elders went to the twins' father and asked if the twins could come and tell them what the red parrots wanted. The father agreed to this. Magpie and lizard were taken before the red parrots. The twin children squawked and the red parrot squawked back for a long time. And then the twins informed the people that the birds predicted the coming of a violent people in wind-driven canoes. This tribe would be dressed in metal garments. They would ride on the backs of enormous dogs. They would bring unknown diseases with no cures, wars, destruction, misuse of sacred tobacco and other sacred plants and animals, new gods, and eventually there would be death-bringing monsters made of metal appearing on the earth and in the sky. There would be no way to prevent these things from happening. Sadly, the minds of the people were closed to prophecies. They could not hear and comprehend the words the twins spoke. Years later, the people were completely unprepared for the arrival of the ferocious men dressed in metal. Red parrot is associated with the ears. These birds have developed superb powers of hearing and are able to mimic the slightest nuance of human language. Red parrot has the ability to hear sounds from a great distance. Red parrots are the keepers of the powers of clairaudience. The ancients knew how to use this ability. 
Red Parrot has the ability to project sound that can clearly be heard at a long distance. Oddly enough, this power dwells behind the bird's eyelids. Red Parrot can pinpoint the exact meaning of any spoken word by listening to the sound inside the sound. Red Parrot's teachings make it possible to hear and become a channel for spirits existing on other planes. Red Parrot feathers are found are bound with rain and sun. Red Parrot's feathers are used in music making to conjure the intricate red rainbow sound. Red Parrot instructs us to always hear what is being said. Deep inside the great silence, there is a song for from yourself to yourself. The sound is quick and delicate. The inner you calls within the deep stillness, and the inner you hears the call and understands the oneness of all creation. Red Parrot Card is telling you that you are not listening, or you are listening to the wrong stuff. You aren't hearing beyond your own noise. Listen, and listen well. Tune in and hear deeply the sounds generated by the world, the wind, the rains, the world wind, sirens, traffic, human and animal language. Listen to the insect musicians playing and singing their unearthly choral. Listen to the beat and rhythms of life, the poetry of simple sound. Really listen up is Red Parrot's message. For there is an answer waiting for you. You might be sitting in a cafe or enjoying yourself at a party and you overhear precisely the information you need. If you have ears, make Red, hap red Parrot happy and use them. Your inner voice may tell you where to find a new friend or make connection with an old one. The answer to a haunting question you have been struggling with is near. I told you. But you didn't listen to me, squawks Red Parrot. The noise and sound pollution in the world today lead us to tune out. Red Parrot Card asks, are there too many voices bombarding you? Be selective. Embrace life and drop the illusionary. Choose carefully what you listen to and turn off the noise makers. Learn to listen with discernment. Red Parrot Card reminds us as sons and daughters of the humming earth to turn to the heavens and listen. The answers to our current dilemmas cascade down from the great silence. Listen, listen, Red Parrot says. Listen, and you may truly know what the galactic wind is saying. You may even hear the voice of voices. Loved it. Loved it. Now, let's get to the last, which is always the Isis Oracle deck. And we will see what we get um, from her wisdom. Um, Mama Isis, can you give us something on 3D? Baby, don't hurt me. Kind of love. And I just want one card. Three just fell out, but just one. Not of Isis. Not of Isis, energetic stabilization with the buckle of the beloved. Not of Isis. Let's see. There we go. 88, which is a 16, which is also a 7. Here we go, beloved. This is a long one. Okay. Okay. Energetic stabilization with the buckle of the beloved. Each initiate has their own unique spiritual blueprint and particular skills 
talents and higher densities unfolding that use their unique attributes. Part of your spiritual blueprint is a special relationship to the energies of the goddess. This means that not only do you have the important spiritual task of helping her thrive in this world, but you are afforded her power, protection, and abundance too. You are now deepening your connection to her. You are under the spiritual guidance and protection of the Divine Feminine. Part of your high destiny this lifetime is to heal and flourish through the Divine Feminine in her many forms, especially in those forms that truly resonate and hold meaning for you. This healing will happen on your personal path and may well be part of the work that you offer in service to the world, which may be simply in how you live your life. This oracle brings special indication that the, your soul is braiding or twining with the divine feminine energies in a particular form. Pay attention to that. That that has a lot of energy to it. Beloveds, what, what, I'm, what I'm getting from, from this is that you need to see which divine feminine calls to you. And you need to align yourself with her energy. And when I say calls to you, it's, it's a divinity that will be most attractive to you, that will resonate most, most, <laughs> most with um your current life experiences and what you have endured and what you have gone through, um, you will be able to relate to the feminine goddess divine energies in that matter, manner. Um, and that will be the one that calls to you, the one you can identify with the most or the one that may teach you the most, may be the total opposite of, of, of you and what you have experienced. But um, I can always, one of mine was Inanna. Inanna was the first goddess to come to me and speak with me that I realized was a goddess and what was happening. And she took me and showed me what the underworld journey is all about. Um, it's about you admitting what you have done wrong and forgiving yourself and doing penance for what you've done with your shadow self. So you are acknowledging the shadow self and what you did to the shadow self. And you are apologizing and submitting to that shadow self in order to rise to the next level that you need to as a goddess. It's about, Inanna did not know humility before she had that experience of being stripped. She knew she was the bomb diggity and that's, that's how she was and that's how she rolled, you know? And like I said, Inanna is I-N-N-A-N-A. -N -N -A. She's Ishtar um, as well. And it's it's a very deep, long story, but it teaches you. It really teaches you. So this knot of Isis is saying find something that binds you so that you're not alone and you have this energy that you can identify with and that you can call upon and that you can project let me get to it. This oracle brings 
Special indication that your soul is braiding or twining with the divine feminine energies in a particular form. For some, that will be a specific goddess and the energetic process will often be strong and deep. The initiate will feel as if they are integrating the part of this goddess that is not just in them, but is a part of their own consciousness. I did that on the segment video. It is a deeply personal, spiritually powerful, and beautiful growth experience for the soul. This process does not make you lose your individuality if it is happening in a genuine way. You will not believe yourself to be the goddess in question. You will instead experience her as a part of your own being and your being as a part of her. You will not cease to exist as an individual light, and yet you will have grown more into divine communion with the sacred divine feminine. For others, there will be a sense of the divine feminine in many forms and faces, and you will enjoy her variety and vastness as you grow spiritually. You will not sense a particular goddess so much as you feel a deepening soul connection and awakening to the divine feminine principle, which is the animating force behind all goddess energies. For still others, there will simply be a knowing that love for the divine feminine, whether a man or woman, is a key part of your spiritual journey this lifetime. That is your important spiritual task, to just love her and be loved by her, living with honor and respect for the body, the earth, and being committed to grow in conscious awareness as to how to best express that love and respect in a genuinely healing way. Whether you feel the connection with an individual goddess or the divine feminine more holistically, as your soul braids or twines with her, you will feel your awareness and consciousness of your own divine feminine nature becomes stronger. Aho, ashe, 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 amen. More integrated and a more balanced part of your life and sense of self. The body will also be integrating this shift in your soul. As you, as any work with the feminine energies, help bring body and soul light together. Blending the physical and inner worlds of light together until they began to feel very connected and harmonized. And beloveds, I'm being told, again, this knot of Isis is red. To use the color red um, <laughs> to use the color red in your imagery to also if you're going to get a long red scarf or something and just Tie it, belt it around you and see you binding yourself to whatever goddess energy um, that you've twined with. Eventually, as this process continues, when you feel your body, you will feel your soul like present there. There will be no distinction between your soul and your body. It is magnificent luminous, joyful state of wonder to embody. People will be asking you, what have you been doing to have such a beautiful inner glow? As an initiate, 123.33, as an initiate of the divine feminine, you are offered a sacred tool to assist you in integrating and honoring her energies for your own benefit and for the benefit of the human collective. This tool will help your soul blend with the divine feminine and higher vibration, and this in turn will naturally draw body and soul into deeper harmony and connection. You are invited to experience this sacred tool for yourself by calling upon the sacred healing and protection of the knot of Isis. The knot or buckle of Isis protects, guides, and stabilizes your energy field whilst it is in transition from one state to another. It is especially useful for spiritual growth with the feminine energies because they, these are intimately related to the body and the relationship 
between the soul and the body, creating light within the body, connecting soul and body as one conscious, harmonious, illuminating being. I can only show you what I just saw. <sighs> okay. The knot of Isis is like a container that holds you together whilst inside in a gentle way. You fall apart enough that you can be reorganized, restructured, and reformed within the sacred container of the sacred knot. Once you are stable in your new soul structure, the knot is no longer needed. Until the next transition point in your relationship between your body of growing light and your soul, as they become more fully united as one. And I have just been told that if you are in a relationship or if you are single and you need a little ritual um, of unification, get you a red scarf or red rope or however, just a red piece of fabric or whatever, red string or, or whatever. And the next time you become intimate with your partner, or with yourself, wrap this Isis knot, this red string rope, whatever it is, wrap it around you with the intention of connecting, divinely connecting, divinely being in that same energy, in that same essence, at the same time, and connecting. And since we just had that parrot card and both of these are indeed red, listen to what your part say. Listen to what comes up in your mind and follow that. Mm, okay. And they wanted you to do this with the goddess, but... The way this came, it was it was between, also between lovers. 3D don't hurt me, so you know the one of the ways is, is creating that intimacy, intimacy and connection with your partner. You know, the more intimate you are with someone, the harder it is to hurt them. The more connected you are to someone the harder it is to disappoint them or let them down or not live up to your own potential because they inspire you and they motivate you. They uplift you. They support you. And you feel it enough so that you rise. But you have to take the time to make your connections solid. That you are indeed connected, committed, one. Okay. Because you are integrating high level. Mm, sorry. <laughs> Once you are stable, mm, sorry, the knot of Isis is like a container that holds you together whilst inside in a gentle way. You fall apart enough that you can be reorganized, restructured, and reformed within the sacred container of the sacred knot. Once you are stable, that's stability again, beloveds, that's what the very first video was um, about stability and love, and that love has to be stable. You know, you want stability in your relationship. You want the other person to be stable. You want to depend upon them. You want them to be responsible. Once you are stable in your new soul structure, the knot is no longer needed until the next transition point in your relationship between your body of growing light and your soul as they become more fully united as one. 
You may call for the knot of Isis as a symbol that you visualize or an energetic support structure that you may not perceive directly, but will feel in effect. A sense of being held safe and firm to the perfect degree. Anytime you need this, you can do the ritual that follows or the simple invocation beneath it. As long as it is prefaced with in unconditional love, you shall be supported in exactly the way that best serves you. Because you are integrating high level vibrational energies, rest and meditation, ocean swims and time in nature, as well as working with pyramids of light and crystal can assist with this soul twining process now too. Listen to your body soul as it grows with divine feminine wisdom and trust that she will guide you, whether man or woman, deeper into your own healing, which benefits us all. This oracle comes as clear confirmation that you are integrating high level vibrational energy. If you have been wondering if your dreams, intuitions, goddess related meditations and communications are genuine, then this oracle serves as confirmation. If you have pulled the Lady of the Stars card along with this oracle of the Knot of Isis, the high vibrational energy that you are assessing had a celestial quality of a highly advanced spiritual civilization as well. It will have a stellar, non-human quality that is loving, wise, and free of fear. If you drew the Oracle of the High Priestess as well as the Knot of Isis, then the new energy of the Divine Feminine that is being integrated by your body and soul at this time will form a significant element of your unfolding. life path and spiritual destiny on this planet in the future. You may like to start with the incantation of the Isis, of the knot of Isis below and then continue. Okay, let's do that. You can say this incantation to assist with any energetic fluctuations and their symptoms such as headaches, problems regulating body temperature after energy work, and times when you sense something is happening within your own energy body and just want additional support. It is useful at the beginning of the healing visualization above. And we're doing the invoking the knot of Isis. In unconditional love, I call forth the Isis knot. I am held in love like a babe in a cot. The buckle of the beloved has me secure, as my energy field now does mature. The goddess within my body and soul, the knot of Isis, helps me grow old. Helps me grow whole. Where did I get old from? Helps me grow whole. Close your eyes and imagine that you are being gently rocked in a vibrant red cradle that feels safe and stable, neither too small nor too large. It is just the right size, shape, and movement for you to feel perfectly comfortable. I just felt this book vibrate, okay? The cradle radiates the most beautiful red you have ever seen or felt vibrant and glowing, and in it, you feel safe, secured, and loved. Within it, you can grow, and magically, the, cat, the cradle grows. As you do so, it is always the perfect shape and size for you. Allow yourself to grow as large as you like. Your energy field growing, pulsing, and expanding with light and strength with divine goddess energies until you feel as large, strong, and potent as it is right for you at this time. At all times, the cradle holds you perfectly. This cradle is a symbol for the knot of Isis, and you are held. Stay with the feeling of this for a long, as long as necessary, and then say, In all ways, I am held and safe. As I grow strong and take my place, 
in my high spiritual destiny for the benefit of all humanity, the knot of Isis supports me in love and light and of my own. You are ready? Just open your eyes. And beloveds, that is the card portion of 3D Baby Don't Hurt Me. Um, how we view love as understanding that each of us views love differently. Each of us expresses love differently. Each of us flirts with love differently, entertains love differently, sees love differently, reacts to love differently. And you need to be okay with that. You need to be able to have that kind of fluidity in your relationship. And that kind of fluidity comes with an intimacy of conversation and being comfortable with someone. If you're not comfortable, let that person communicate that. Communicate, I have a hard time being comfortable with someone. I, I have trust issues or, you know, I, I don't really talk to a lot of men, so I don't know what to say or, you know, or, you know, if, if they're coming at you in a way that is not appropriate for you, for where you are, for how you love, for how you want to be approached, you have to let that person know. That person can't read your mind. Let that person know. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not interested in that kind of conversation. Um, and, and that's your truth. Let that be your truth and stand by your truth. Just because someone else is turned on and, and want to show you their little naked selves and, and, and all of their other little crap, you know, you don't, you mm, let them know, communicate. I'm, I'm not into that. And if that's what you have to share with me, I'm going to block you. I'm going to let you go. You, I'm not going to keep your energy around me, no matter how many different little, you know, IDs and avatars and whatever. You're, you're, you're still coming and wanting the same thing, so you're easily identifiable. That just shows you how, you know, your thoughts 